Aviso Inspect introduces a set of new features on top of our Aviso flagship application and this presentation is going to go through each of them. First, uh, we are going to speak about the new recipe mechanism we added inside Aviso Inspect that allows for automation of complex workflows. These recipes can then be reapplied automatically to a different data to perform the same kind of analysis. Uh, then we will speak about the reporting mechanism that allows for archiving and sharing of uh, inspection results so you can publish reports that include snapshots and data tables coming from your analysis. We will speak also about the new metrology workroom that allows for creating dimensional measurement on your parts and finally we will see how Aviso Inspect can streamline inspection workflow in an inline production environment. Aviso Inspect provides an advanced recipe mechanism that allows for any defect detection or part characterization to be automated. For any particular inspection workflow, the recipe is created just once and can then be replayed at any time. The recipe includes advanced analysis processes that give meaningful insight about defects that may be detected during the inspection, generating automatically the quantifiable measurements that allow to assert the part quality. So in order to illustrate the recipe mechanism, we are going to load a casted metal part. So this is a spring-loaded cam. Uh, so this is part of a cam clip uh, that is a mechanical part uh, that you can find on a sailboat, for instance, to pinch ropes. And uh, as you can see, um, uh, this is uh, quite bad casting. You have a lot of porosity inside. So uh, we want to create a very simple recipe to illustrate uh, the mechanism that is going to detect the large porosity uh, inside the part. So we start by putting together some image processing modules. Uh, we build a mask for the part. We actually fill the holes uh, inside this mask. And we actually subtract this mask from uh, the filled one. And at the end, what we are getting there is uh, a single uh, data set uh, that is representing the porosity, or the large porosity, actually, inside the mechanical part, inside the spring-loaded cam. And uh, we can see here, actually, we are just going to display and identify each of the pores uh, inside the volume. And here it is. And at the end, what we are going to do, we just uh, run a, what we call a label analysis onto our data. That is going to give us you know, some statistical information about all of the pores uh, inside uh, the part. And just to show, so this is what we are getting each pore has been identified individually uh, inside the 3D volume and then quantified. So once we have created uh, this uh, uh, simple workflow, we can create a recipe. And now we are switching to what we call the recipe workroom. And uh, we are going to run the recipe from there. So just uh, deleting you know, everything that was produced previously uh, when we created the workflow. So here is our recipe and we just run the recipe and automatically the recipe is going to go through uh, the different steps and at the end what we will get, and we will see this inside the project view, we will get actually the result of our analysis. So switching back to project view, here are all of the results that were produced by the recipe, uh, all of the intermediate results up, up to the final results. And here we are seeing this final result, that is each pore has been identified and quantified uh, by running the recipe. So this is the result of the quantification. We are getting the same table as before with uh, all you know, a localization and port distribution, volume distribution of the pores uh, inside the, the part. What we can do also, we have a mechanism in order to reduce uh, uh, consumption of memory that allows to run a recipe and ask the recipe to remove all, all intermediate results that are not needed anymore. So now if we switch back to our recipe workroom and if we run our recipe, uh, so it's going to go again through all of the different steps. Uh, but what we'll see inside going back to the project view is that we keep only the final result, which is a table that has been generated uh, by the analysis. So here is a table with the same kind of result. Until now, all of the recipes have been run automatically. So going through all of the different modules automatically without actually uh, stopping at any step. What we can do, we can create what we call breakpoint and we can ask the recipe to stop at a particular point, at a particular step, in order to customize this step, change some of the parameters. For instance, here we are going to change the kind of measures we want to perform on the part. By default, we have been 
uh, using a very simple measure set that was made just to localize uh, each of the different pores and give their volume information. We want to change this and add some measurement uh, uh, that is going to give us some information about uh, the actual shape of each pore. So we just put a breakpoint, the recipe is stopping there, we change the kind of measurements we are looking at and then we continue the recipe. And at the end of the run, now we have actually a new table that is giving us this new kind of measures about localization, volume, but also shape uh, analysis. Once a recipe has been created, of course it can be saved. <laughs> Uh, and you can, uh, like this, build a kind of library of recipes. And uh, in order to illustrate this, I'm going to open a more complex uh, recipe that is coming uh, with uh, Aviso Inspect, uh, that is an adaptive uh, porosity detection. So it's much more advanced algorithm compared to the one we just created. And uh, we are going to run it on the same data. So this CCP has different breakpoints that allow us to customize uh, the different kind of uh, image processing modules that are used for the recipe. The breakpoint can be removed if you are happy with uh, the actual parameters of the modules and uh, you can resave the recipe with or without breakpoints by adding or removing any of the breakpoints. So here we have different breakpoints that allow us to control, uh, for instance here the detection of large porosity uh, and then we are going to move uh, to uh, another breakpoint where we are going to detect uh, the smaller porosities, so the ones that are closer to the resolution of the scan and that are harder to detect. And they were not detected actually by previous recipes that we created. So in this case we have some uh, different uh, uh, image processing modules that allow us to detect this uh, smaller porosity and by uh, the end of the recipe uh, we can select what kind of measurement we want to run on this, on, on this uh, pause and uh, the result is once again a table because what is important is to get this kind of data uh, from your analysis where we get actually detected something like 13,000 pores and for each of them we have their volume information. Aviso Inspect introduces a new reporting workroom that allows to save or archive results of your analysis. You can load whatever HTML template that you want that has been created with whatever HTML editor. What is important is to have frames because these frames are going to uh, be associated to snapshots and tables that are generated during your analysis uh, inside Aviso. I'm going to load a sample data set and we are going to start by showing how we can populate interactively uh, this reporting workroom. So we are going to build very quickly a few basic visualizations onto this data set using uh, this uh, uh, pop-up window for the generating snapshot and we are choosing to export this to the reporting workroom. So I'm going to create a second uh, visualization that is a basic slice and again we are going to export this uh, snapshot to the reporting workroom and we repeat this actually for two other, other slices with uh, two different orientation. So now we will get actually four different snapshots that has been exported to the reporting workroom. I want to generate a table to show you also how a table can be exported. I'm uh, going to load a simple porosity recipe and run this porosity recipe from the recipe workroom. The result of the recipe is uh, an analysis spreadsheet and this spreadsheet is automatically exported uh, to the reporting workroom. So if we switch to the reporting workroom now actually we can see that we have four snapshots that we uh, interactively send to the reporting workroom and we have two tables that were the result of our analysis. We can simply drag and drop each of the snapshots to a different frame inside the template and same thing for a table and then we have actually a template that is generated and populated with different snapshots and analysis results. This template can be saved to an HTML file or can be exported also to a PDF document. So now we saw how to interactively generate a report by populating the template uh, with snapshots and tables. We are going to see how we can automatically generate such a report by running a recipe. So we are loading a slightly modified recipe there uh, for porosity analysis where we added a couple of uh, snapshots steps. Uh, these snapshots will be automatically exported to a template. And this template actually can uh, save the association between the frame and the snapshots and the analysis results produced by your recipe. So we are going to load such a report that has been already saved where we associated a couple of snapshots and a table uh, to this particular recipe.
So as you can see, we have two snapshots, one table uh, generated by the recipe. So now if we run the recipe, uh, automatically these snapshots produced by the recipe and the final result of the recipe are going to be sent to the reporting workroom. And the reporting work workroom knows about the association between the frame and the different results that are generated and is going to populate the template automatically. So this is how from Aviso you can automatically generate reports from a recipe. This report, as once again, can be exported to HTML or to PDF. So here we are saving this as a, a PDF file that uh, we can open in any PDF reader. And uh, as you can see, we have the result of our snapshots and all the table that has been generated by uh, our analysis. Aviso Inspect provides dimensional metrology with advanced measurements. It offers an extensive set of automated analysis workflows, so-called recipes, to perform repeatable and robust inspection scenarios. After loading the data, the user can select the precision level at which the interface between material and non-material shall be determined. The standard selection offers two choices, an ISO 50-based surface extraction and a much more sophisticated approach providing sub-voxel accuracy. As a concept of Aviso, of course, it is free to the user to load his own surfaces for inspection. After selecting the surface determination method, the user can start to fit standard geometries to the data. Aviso Inspect offers to fit points, lines, circles, planes, spheres, cylinders and cones, including truncated zones. In order to fit geometries, the user has to select points on the object. For doing this, Aviso Inspect offers four tools. A single point-click tool, two brush-like tools and a magic wand. As a matter of fact, parts that have been imaged using computer tomography do come out of the CT far away from being aligned to any kind of coordinate system. For this reason, the user can define so-called local coordinate systems based on the previously fitted geometries. For creating an LCS, the user has to select two perpendicular objects and an origin from the fitted geometries list. It is also possible to only select one orientation, but then the coordinate system is incomplete and only aligned to this single orientation. After fitting geometries and after defining the optional local coordinate system, the user can proceed to the actual measurement. Aviso Inspect offers a large amount of simple and constrained measurements. Simple measurements are derived from fitted geometry's properties like the diameter of a circle or of a cylinder. Constraint measurements always involve two objects and perform measurements on selected properties like axes, centers, extremities or infinite properties. The user can assign to each measurement an optional upper and lower tolerance that has to be fulfilled.
constraint measurements include also determination of angles between objects. Each test plan can be saved and then be reapplied on a similar part. All proceedings are automatically reapplied starting from the refitting of the geometric shapes, the measurements and the tolerance evaluation. Finally, the user can create a report that includes screenshots and test plan results. Fanny, uh, I'd like to speak about the new inline extension of Aviso Inspect uh, to be released a little bit later this year. The purpose of this extension is to actually connect the inspection workflow to the acquisition system. The acquisition system pushes city data to a file server that can be, for instance, a DICOM or DICON-D server, for instance. Uh, Aviso Inspect acquisition service is preparing uh, the data, uh, is going to pre-process the data, such as uh, splitting multi-part acquisition into individual parts, registering part to reference model, or applying artifact reduction algorithm in order for the part to be ready for inspect inspection workflow. A designer application is used to define inspection scenarios that are automatically going to be processed through an inspector application, which is accepting or rejecting the part according to the results generated by the analysis workflow. Then, a rejected part can be reviewed optionally in a reviewer application, where the inspector can finally accept or reject the part for final decision.